Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Those of you who've been following on the channel of any length of time will recognize this as the fireplace heater in my daughter's yurt. Complete with the famous warble wires in tension harnessed to the tent so that when the big gust of wind tries to lift the tent roof up into the sky, it cannot possibly disconnect the flue between the firebox and the tent roof, which has been known to occur, thus necessitating this modification. Now, single wall flue, double wall flue, it's only about 30 centimetres long, if that. Here on the outside, this is what the canvas calico fly arrived like, and we put this particular grommet system through it. And here you can see the outer wall of the double wall chamber, which comes up to about here. And I've got a 100 mil stainless steel flue pipe and put it over there, and it's got air gaps around it, so it should suck air into those gaps and blast that air straight through without letting the really hot air touch this, I don't know, modern synthetic asbestos look-alike stuff. And this is what it looks like from the outside. Now once again, I have used duct tape to reinforce the nylon canvas before sewing through it. And uh, this stainless steel feeds the hot air into the sort of air insulating chamber around the flue, which in its, uh, its turn prevents the flue from being over chilled, which would cause it to block up. It's pretty complicated having a fire in a tent. Here's the thing. We have had trouble with hot embers coming down and burning little tiny holes in the tent, which we've been rectifying with silicon. It plugs a hole, it permeates the weave, it more or less defects a colour match. And that's how the tent got through the winter. So we know there's not that many cinders actually come down and burn a hole in the cotton but the cotton's been treated with a fireproofing material. Whereas that's what the end of an incense stick does when you just push it against the bag, which is the same as the bag this one came in because we tried that too when we decided to remove the chimney for summer. So precautions have been taken. I am about to light a fire. And we will see what we will see. And because I am a bit of a belt and braces person, the ancient Bushfire Council backpack is standing by, ready to go, as is the 130 litres at 130 PSI in the water cannon, aka airport firefighter. My feeling is that if it doesn't set the bloody thing on fire and require putting out today, right now at 23 degrees, in daylight with no dew on it, it should be all right. And if it needs to be put out, okay, I'll put it out and I'll bloody patch it. And I shouldn't, perhaps, hopefully, I shouldn't use the daughter's tent, but she did say, you know, I'm going to test the chimney now, Dad. So yeah, okay, Daddy will test the chimney. Baseline temperature there is 25 degrees. 33.6 on the underside, 26.8 the actual canvas itself. We'll see what we learn. Inside, 29.5 the crown of the tent, 21.8 on the floor. Pretty please, creator. Don't let me fuck this up. Um. 
Okay, so we've got a small hot fire going. I'm just going to run around and take some temperatures. Thirty point five. Twenty eight. One hundred and fifty on the fire pipe. Top of the stove, 125. Thirty-five degrees, the pellet hose. Thirty-nine degrees, the outside of the double wall chamber. Thirty-three degrees, the stainless steel. Thirty-one degrees, the nylon closest to the hot metal. So far, this is looking good. Hundred and seventy four degrees, top of the chimney. Yeah, that's burnt loose and a couple of bits of oil. So far, no hole. So far, so good. Blue temperature 198 degrees. Outside of the stainless steel 35. Outside of the double wall blue 36. So far, so goodly. Undecided is the nylon temperature 32 degrees. In summer, it gets up to 50 degrees up the top there. So far, this looks okay. 35 degrees. Throttle back 60%. Full open. Thirty five point seven. Blue temperature one hundred and ninety outside of the bottom end of the double wall section, forty five. Uh -huh. Burnt leaves just fell down. None of them ignited anything. 
There's a really good refraction shadow graph up here, which will show the flue gases bending light as it goes through them, as it comes out the top. I don't know about you, but I find that sort of thing kind of fascinating. Just hope it's actually showing. Yeah, the products of combustion. There's actually a bloody lot to chimney design. Forty one point nine, forty three point eight, seventy five degrees. That bit of calico there, or maybe it's that bit of metal. Fifty six point two, where it's closest to the radiant heat from there to there. We will see what we will see. Kind of fascinating experiment. You can see the heat flowing straight up the side of it too when there's no wind. Oh yeah. You can also see quite a few, oh, there's a little cluster of leaves or something up there just under the Chinaman's hat. And there's shit flaking off from up there. Yeah, see? We have little flakes of old vegetation and shit, but so far nothing has actually burnt the fabric, which is very, very gratifying. I don't know, I think this might be a successful test. And if it is as successful as it looks, well then the plan is going to be to leave this one up until it gets ripped in half in a windstorm, and then I'll just transform that whole grommet across to the new undegraded fly and we'll still regard a fly as being a consumable item if we can prove that the nylon fly is safe to use the fire with okay now 350 degrees 325 180 200 outside 148 150 77 degrees the canvas hundred degrees the top of the canvas 61 degrees the fly 57 degrees the stainless steel yeah I don't think I'll put any more wood on it right now because in here it's 34 and a half degrees and if we go up to the crown, it's 42 degrees up there, 44 degrees, 31 degrees on the floor. Lo and behold, it works. Kimosabi, it works. Just think. If I had a house with a basement, I wouldn't get all the fun that there is to be had when one's daughter comes home to live in a standalone solar electric bill tent in Daddy's front yard. And as regards the fire extinguisher, the Bushfire Council backpack, and the 130 litre, 130 psi. Airport firefighting water cannon. Okay, yep. I can see how a lot of people would consider that to be something of an overreaction. But you know what? There's a saying 
penny wise and a pound foolish and it's better to be a penny wise than turn out being a pound foolish so it cost me bugger all to go to the trouble of laying out a fire engine a firefighting backpack as well as a fire extinguisher because if i needed to put that out because the spark had come up and the whole bloody nylon had started not only getting holes in it but the holes had started growing and smoldering then i didn't have a lot of time before trying to get water on it and if that wouldn't do it then i could run down there and i could pull the pin and come back i don't know it might take me eight ten seconds and i could come at it with enough to bloody near blow that burnt tent fly straight off the top of the calico tent the 130 psi is a fair bit when you got water involved so yeah i was a penny wise and therefore i look a little bit foolish over prepared but I don't get to ring up my daughter and say, oh, by the way, I tried out the chimney and I fucking burnt your tent. Haha, <laughs> see, not as silly as I look, regardless of the fact that, mm, yeah, I look a bit silly. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.